What's up, Bogetas? Welcome back to Mini Money, and today I have with me a story time. Yeah, so it's been a while, it's been a while since I just gave a good story and inspired by last week's video. Today I want to do a story about a scamster. Yeah, Mutu Abaya and Con Watu Wakawakati. So today we're going to be talking about a guy called Charles Ponzi, right? Um, I don't know whether you've ever heard of him, but what I can guarantee you have heard of is the word Ponzi scheme. Just take it into a Ponzi scheme. And you know someone is about to about to go for the okay? It is because of this guy called Charles Ponzi. Then he was so good at the job of calling others that there's a whole uh, term coined from his own name. All right. So why do we begin this story? We begin this story in 1903. So in 1903, uh, Charles Ponzi, he's, he's an Italian fellow. He moves from Italy and decides, "Hey, I'm going to live the American dream and see if." One and two will add up for me and my family. So he moves into the USA and he just starts life. I think what work he moving to the USA when apart from me, how exactly do you know where to eat, where to sleep? Like for me, I'm a guy. But Charles Ponzi moved into the US in the in, in 1903 and he just got a job as a dishwasher. So he was working in a hotel somewhere, Kosha Biombo, that kind of thing. But because the guy was very charismatic, Jituma, he was promoted to become a waiter. So in his waiting job, Akanda Kumbuza Pesa, I think that's when ideas began to get into his head. So in his waiting job, he got fired. Why? Because he was shortchanging customers. So somehow, somehow he would find a clever way to steal from customers and Akafuto Kazi. So when he was fired, um, he just started hustling, trying to find a way out. And one of the things that he found during this period is there's an opportunity for him to go to Canada. So he went on to Canada and he got a job there in 1907 as a bank teller. Yeah, so there was a bank called Banco, I think Banco Zarossi. I think that was the name of the bank. Uh, he started working there as a teller, but he bank owned by this guy called Zarossi. Yeah, he bank in Iku a bit funny here. Yeah? It was mainly aimed at um, Italians. And you know, someone like, you know, uh, our guy Charlie, Charles was very good as a teller because he could speak Italian, he could speak French, and he could speak English, and he in Canada. So he was very, very ripe. So the manager really liked him, the owner of the bank, sorry, the owner of the bank really liked him, and he promoted him to become the bank manager, right? So he's there, he's happy. In a few months, he's already a manager. He's really, really life. He's, he's really loving life because, you know, from dishwasher to manager in just a few short years, American dream, check. Eh, but this guy, I think his name is Luis. Yeah, so Luis La Rosa is a bit sketchy, and he was offering guys six percent uh, on bank deposits, while every other bank that was doing very well was offering three percent interest. So there was just something fishy that was going on, and Charles learned of it. And before long, this bank completely collapsed, and this guy escaped. And he went, I think he went to Mexico. He escaped from uh, Canada, disappeared with people's money, vanished. So uh, our dear guy here, Charles Ponzi, is left in Canada, nothing to do, no job. So So at one point, he decided, you know what, because I know some of the clients we used to have at the bank, I'm just going to look for them and ask them for work. So one day he's just strolling, he's going to a particular client um, to ask whether he can find work. He goes to his warehouse. And if you have a warehouse, there's nobody there. And then I think another Chokora Chokora, he found a checkbook. He wrote himself a check of $423, right? Um, but then he was caught. It didn't take him too far. So he was caught and he spent three years in jail. Yeah, so between 1908 and 1911, Charles Ponzi was actually in prison. Uh, well, he was released. And after his release, he decided, oh, who will become a bit to Canada? They're not going very well for me. Let me go back to the US and see what they can do. Ah, Punde si Punde. He got caught up again in another scam or another illegal activity where he was trying to <laughs> he was trying to smuggle immigrants italian immigrants so again he was caught he was jailed yeah he was jailed in in, in atlanta for two years uh he's released again so i'm just giving you a background history yeah, of this guy called charles Ponzi. so he's released um at this point he decided let me just try different kinds of businesses Nini. he got a car like hey yo what's up they got married in 1918 and he was just trying, you know, he tried very many different kinds of business, tried to, to run an ad agency, didn't go well, tried to run an export import uh, kind of business, didn't go well. Akanda Fadia Babake, father in law, Kazi, the father to the wife, didn't go well, they had a grocery store, didn't go well. My shame, a chacha. 
So in one of those times when he was just trying out, yeah, in the he was just trying out anything and everything, he started advertising for business opportunities to people in Europe. So he would write letters to people in Europe telling them, oh, there's this opportunity in the US, there's this opportunity in the US, and he would, he would just try, he was just a guy trying out. Then one of the companies responded to him. And when they responded to him, they sent him something called an IRC, an IRC. So this is International Reply Coupon. This is just like a coupon, like it's, yeah, it's literally that, it's, it's a coupon where if I send it in a mail, it means utakuwa na uwezo wa kunijibu. Yeah, it's almost like sending someone a stamp. And these coupons could actually go into the US Postal and change them for stamps. Hey, Ujama, okay, okay. Oh, so many women to me, but no one can to me a coupon. Now, this coupon, it has face value. But if I convert it into American shillings, kunaka profit up katikati. Because what this coupon is worth, it's like they send you a coupon um, that costs them, like, it, it, the face value is $5, but really what it would cost you um, is, is a dollar, right? So between the value of the coupon and the exchange, when you change it into a stamp that you can sell, you can put up like some three, four dollars in between. So Charles Ponzi was extremely excited. He decided, okay, this is some form of arbitrage that I can do here. And at least something finally is looking like it's, it's opening up business for me. So right there, he decided, okay, I'm going to look for a few people that are going to give me money so that I buy very many R R R IRCs are from Europe and then sell them here in the United States. So he began looking at the bank, he was like, he was really working. So he decided, okay, you know what, let me just ask my friends. So he asked his friends and from his friends he got um, a few shillings and he said, sour. he bought a few RICs and now the catch for him to be able to convince a few of his friends to invest in this new business is he was telling them that I will give you back your money with 50% increase yeah, 50% profit in 45 days. And if you can wait 90 days, I will give you with 100% profit. So, hey, you know, Keti, you know, in 45 days, you know, you I mean, in 90 days, you know, you know, that doesn't look like a bad idea. So, a few people trusted him, they gave him the money, and true to his word, he paid them with the 45, uh, with the 50% after 45 days. So, it started getting traction, like, Aya, Ponzi might be up to something. So he decided, okay, now that a few people have begun to trust me, let me start my own company called Securities Exchange and I see what I can do with this thing. And he got a bunch of the first 18 investors. These 18 investors gave him $1,800. He's in business. Business is good. He is actually in business. He's supposed to get these RICs um, and then sell them, exchange in the post, uh, in American Post, get some money in between and continue the business. Yeah, right? Simple. No, not that simple. What happens actually, <laughs> Charles Ponzi does not go and buy these RICs, right? This business was somehow legitimate, like there, is a, there was a chance to make money, but not as much money as he was promising out here. So what he did, he just kind of, he just kept getting investors and then paying investor, paying the, 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 the usual saying that says, robbing Peter to pay Paul exactly what Paul, uh, Charles Ponzi was doing at this time. So with the 18 clients, uh, with the 18 investors that he had had, this had required about 53,000 IRCs for his business to make sense. Like these coupons, he needed 53,000 of them for that business to make sense. But Charles Nidani Akamu Apana, as long as people keep coming to me, people keep coming to me, I will continue with the business. So he moved from uh, 18 investors to 1,500 investors like this. Then he moved on to 15,000 investors like this. So Charles just started getting so many people who are excited because who doesn't want to, you know, to make 50% in 45 days and 100% in just 90 days, three months, Pesaco in a double. That was a very, very sweet deal. Now, everybody else does not know what Ponzi is doing, robbing Peter to pay Paul. People don't know that. People think this is legit. Right, and Ponzi begins to really do well. Yeah, so in February of 1920, and it has their $5,000. Right, by the time it is July, just a few months, July of 1920, Charles Ponzi is doing business of a 1 million USD per day. That is how much money is being transacted through his securities exchange company. 
that my friends is completely mind blowing can you imagine at in february ya hiyo mwaka ulikuwa unacheza na 5k kwa biashara yako then sasa hizi unacheza na uh, over 1 million yeah in just a few months over 1 million and this we're talking about usd so that is a ridiculous amount of money again the situation is the same he's taking investors money and paying other investors people at this time are crazy yeah there's even a time there was a post um there was an article in boston post Yeah, a whole front uh, front page article saying about Ponzi and his business and the people are getting rich and away everything. The morning of Ponzi and Eric kwa kwa office, he's finding thousands of people waiting to give him their money. People were excited to give him their money. They were like, "Hey, just take our money 45 days. You just come away 90 days, you just come away." So Ponzi was doing well. Yeah, by July June, July, that guy was doing well. He had bought a mansion. He was he bought a automobile, and you can imagine this in 1920, someone actually owning a vehicle. Yeah, yeah, this guy was living the absolute life, and of course that attracted a few investigators. Of course, it was a Six months, six months, and you're doing this well. What do you what do, what do you know that we don't know? So one investigator tried something, and he was like, "Hey, we are not sure where you're getting your money." Blah blah blah. Where Ponzi comes to. Defamation, yeah, uh, written defamation libel. So he was sued. Uh, they went to court, and Ponzi actually won that uh, suit, and he got five hundred thousand USD from it because this guy couldn't prove. He was just saying, "Ah, you just don't get rich overnight." Ponzi is saying, "Prove it," and he was not able to prove it. So that story dies down, yeah. But that first investigation, a few other people are like, "Ah, yeah, yeah, how do you make so much money?" They started doing a few. Now, now this one was a bit under wraps. They started just doing a few, a few more investigations. By the actually, it was uh, the Boston Post that was trying to look what is going, what uh, what is going on exactly with this guy called Charles Ponzi. So with time, they found out what this guy is saying is actually incorrect. And the thing that made them know it's actually incorrect is because according to the magnitude of his business, it meant. That at that point there should have been 160 million IRCs circulating in the U.S. market, but when they look at the U.S. market, there are only 27,000 coupons in the circulation. So of course, the American Post, these investigators, they're like, okay, what's going on exactly? Because 160 million versus 27,000 is a big disparity. Investigation, upekuzi, upekuzi, upelelezi. This guy was actually named. They found out that this guy is, has been robbing Peter to pay Paul, and his business came crashing down around August of 1920. Yeah, so his entire business was was like eight months. Around August of 1920, they found that even he had bought a bank so that he could give himself loans so that he could pay out Paul and Peter and James. Right? Like this guy had gone into extraordinary lengths, yeah, to just keep this facade of a business. Yeah, keep the facade of the business moving and working. So. He was caught. He was put in prison. Um, he went into jail. He served five years. Uh, of course, a few other people they really suffered. Not a few. Very many people really suffered. Twenty um, million dollars was lost. No one could account for twenty million dollars. So his investors, of course, the people who had sold their homes, mortgaged their homes, who had put their life savings, they were conned just because they wanted fifty percent in forty-five days. Right? He went to prison. He was released. This guy thinks there was just something about him because even after he was released from prison, he went to Florida, to Florida, Tampa. He went to get some land, then he see sewage, sewage, and then another was say. So he went back to prison. Essentially, that guy was in and out of prison until 1934, when the U.S. decided enough is enough. Ujama ni Italy. So that is exactly what happened in 1934 when he was released for his dealings in real estate in Tampa. He was deported back into Italy, and that, my friends, is the the story of. Charles Ponzi. So Charles Ponzi, the Ponzi scheme is just literally taking money from Mary to pay Margaret, and that was the situation that this guy did, and he did all that in the tune of millions, all in eight months, all in under eight months. So I do hope you have enjoyed this particular video, and if you think Charles Ponzi was a crazy guy, so much a man into a bunny madoff. Bunny madoff, uh, he I think he collapsed and arrested in in 2008, and he died last year. That guy. Using this same scheme called the Ponzi scheme, he duped people of billions of USD. Yeah, more than twenty billion USD. 
It's crazy. So the thing is, maybe you're asking, okay, fancy story, now we know where the one uh, Ponzi scheme came from. The thing is, every time you're investing and someone is promising you even 50% in one year, even 50% in two years, I question. So uh, that is all for this particular video. I do hope you have enjoyed. I'm going to be catching you guys next week. And until then, kick ass.